Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. We've shown you plenty of ways to upgrade the power steering on your classic Mustang, ranging from power rack opinion conversions all the way up to the electric power steering we did on our Project 5030. While I'm usually all for adding modern updates to classic Mustangs, many times you kind of want to leave the originals alone, and such is the case with our 68 GT500. This car is a very nice, very original driver, but it does have some power steering issues, particularly in the control valve. While we can simply swap a control valve out for a new piece, because this car is very original, we kind of want to keep the original control valve in place, so today we're going to show you how to rebuild it. This is our control valve rebuild kit. It's going to work on any original style control valve from 1965 through 1970. It's going to provide everything necessary for a proper rebuild to get your control valve working as it should. Included in the kit are the two restrictor washers, the bumper, the ball stud spring, the ball stud itself, both ball stud seats, the ball stud socket, and a complete valve seal kit. For this installation, you need a lift or a jack and jack stands, 3 8 ratchet, 3 8 torque wrench, half inch socket, 9 16 socket, 11 16 socket, 3 quarter socket, half inch wrench, 5 8 wrench, needle nose pliers, channel lock pliers, flathead screwdriver, pick, small pry bar, hammer, soft mallet, punch, and a pickle fork. As you're probably aware, the control valve mounts right here on the end of your center line. It serves a very important purpose with the system as it controls the fluid distribution to make the steering work properly. This is bad or leaking and you have all kinds of issues with your power steering. To remove it, what you want to do is remove your wheel first, then disconnect all four lines going to it, move this bracket here, disconnect it from the idler arm, and you can twist it off. We're going to start by removing the nut on top of the control valve where it connects to our pitman arm. Now we can move on to the two control valve lines to go to the slave cylinder. The control valve hoses off and move on to the power steering lines. One located back here, another one up top. With the collar out of the way, now you can remove the roll pin so we can actually turn off the control valve. With everything separated now, grab a pickle fork and separate the pitman arm from the control valve. Now, sometimes this can happen. The ball stud can actually release itself from the control valve and get stuck in the pitman arm. If that happens, remove the control valve and give yourself some more room and they'll figure out how to get the stud out. Before you unthread the control valve, you want to mark its location so the new one goes on the same spot. I recommend doing it. I'm actually going to make a mark with paint here so I know how far threaded on it was. I'm also going to take a measurement so I have double check. I'm going to measure from the grease fitting of the inner tie rod out, which is nice and easy because it's exactly an inch and a half. To get the stud out, there's really no way to get any kind of a puller up in there. There are some specialty tools, but you probably won't have them. We don't have them here either. So the best bet, we're going to remove this nut here for the pitman arm. We'll move the pitman arm and press it out that way. The control valve out, now we can begin the disassembly for the rebuild. First thing you're going to do is remove the spring cap here from the control valve assembly.
Next, remove the centering spring bolt. And remove the spring and the washers. Now we'll flip over to the other side of the valve and remove the sleeve. To start that, remove these two bolts, one here, one back here. Separate the sleeve from the housing, the housing inside. Now we'll remove this seal by pushing through from the other side. Now we'll go back through and remove the seal from the other side. Push down on it. And get the seal and the spacer out, just like the front side there. Put all these pieces and set aside. There you go. Also strip down housing. You can use a screwdriver or a small pry bar. Just lightly press this out. You can do it by hand if you get lucky, but sometimes you just gotta pry it ever so slightly. So you get it out far enough and there's a pin you have to release. The pin can be hard to spot. It's usually gonna be covered with grease. It's right there. Push it and pull it out the bottom. I will turn the sleeve here, gripping this counterclockwise. Unthread it, put that aside. If this off, we can separate the washer. And move back to the main piece. Next, remove the two screws here, so you're gonna remove the clamp from the sleeve. With the clamp and the rubber sleeve. It'd be a little harder to do if your ball stud is still in place. In our case, it's just gonna fall right off. We're going to reach in from the other side here. We're going to push the actual ball flange and socket and everything out the other side. Here you can see the original bumper, spring, then the two ball stud seats. None of those parts will be reused. They're all included in the kit. Now we're going to get the original ball stud socket out. The socket will usually come out a lot easier than it did for us. In our case, because the ball stud actually broke off when we were trying to move our control valve, this edge got a little junked up over here, which made this harder to get out. Now that's good in one piece, you can see with a new one here, it will slide together much, much easier. Once everything's completely disassembled, these are the components we're going to be using off the original for our rebuilds. Once you have it apart, take these pieces, get them all nice and cleaned up, and now we can begin the reassembly. Before you begin the reassembly, you'll need some sort of a bath of ATF, of Type F transmission fluid. What you want to do is the parts, you want to soak them in the fluid before reassembly, make everything go together nicer, plus to lube it up for the reassembly process. Start by taking the ball socket sleeve here, and slide one of the retainers in. This goes back into the original sleeve. And as you saw, we took this apart. This will be a tight fit. If you've ever worked on a firearm, it's going to be that kind of a feel. It's basically going to lock in. It's going to be nice and tight. Slide that down far enough to bring it the ball stud in place. That's in place. We'll take the other retainer, slide it in from the top. With both retainers in the sleeve and the ball stud, it should look like that when you're finished. I'll install the bumper into the spring and insert the spring also inside. Now we're going to take the spool bolt with the travel regulator, add a new cushion to it, include it in the kit, reinstall the washer and thread that in. You want to make sure the sleeve is pressed up to the edge here before you try to thread this in. You want to make sure these holes are visible here. You'll turn the screw, 
until the slot lines up, then reinstall the pin. We're going to start by putting the seal on the spring side here, the smaller side. Put the seal in first, and then we're going to put the bushing in. Push the spool through. It will be a tight fit. Push it up through the seal, through the bushing. I'm going to flip it over. It's flat on the ground all the other side. This is going to be tricky. I'm not going to lie on camera. This is probably going to look a lot easier than it's really going to be when you go to do it. But you want to put, again, put the actual seal in first. And you're going to tap the bushing in very carefully. Now the best trick here is to grab a 11 16 socket, just about the right size. Get everything lined up and sort of tap it in with a small mallet. Push down there, make sure everything is seated properly on that side. See, both sides are good. Now we're gonna prep the housing to install the sleeve. First thing we're gonna do, put a washer down the place here, and another cushion. Get this little spacer sleeve in here before we put the gasket on. Holds everything in place. Now we can install the sleeve to the housing. We're gonna reinstall the original bolts. Next, we'll assemble the spring cap side. We'll start with a retainer plate here and a washer sleeve bushing spring other bushing the washer and finally the nut. Now we're going to torque this down to 100 inch-pounds. You want to use a wrench so you can see the nut. You want to go back a quarter of a turn, 90 degrees. You want to be able to see the nut to make sure the nut is turning and not just the assembly itself. Now we're going to install a new seal in the spring cap and reinstall the cap. And our rebuilt control valve is ready to be reinstalled. And we're going to take our rebuilt control valve and reinstall the sand we removed it and spread it back on. Control valve thread in place, now we can reinstall the roll pin we removed earlier. Reinstall the nut and bolt for the retainer. Now we're going to line it up, reconnect to our pitman arm, reinstall the nut. I'm going to reinstall the cotter pin. And then move on to the lines. Let's start with the upper power steering line. Now 
And the last step now is to install the two control valve hoses. step is going to be install some grease. Once we have the fluid topped off now, we're going to get in, start the car up, make sure it moves properly. Everything feels good once you go lock lock a couple times, then double check the fluid because something's going to go down into the cylinder, top it off, and you're all finished. Our rebuilt original control valve has our 68 GT500 steering like it's supposed to, and the best part about it is it still looks original on the car. The installation is tedious, it's time consuming. You wanna make sure you get everything in the right place or it's not gonna work properly, but figure about three hours start to finish and you'll be back on the road in no time.